So hi, good morning. Welcome to this another series of lecture about uh, basic electrical theory. So in the last lecture, we discussed what is voltage, what is current, and what is resistance. Now, we are going to express the, the relationship of these three terms here into a mathematical expression you, uh, called Ohm's law. So, but before that, let us try to discuss first the unit, the units of measurement, okay, the units of this voltage, current, and resistance. So, first is the voltage. Okay, so the unit voltage is volts. Okay, so the symbol, so this is the unit, this is the symbol. Okay, so the symbol for volts is V, capital letter V. Okay, and then after the voltage, we have the, the current. The current. So the the unit for current is ampere. Okay, and the symbol for the current or the ampere is capital letter A. Okay, and then the last is for the resistance. Okay, so the resistance. The unit of resistance is ohms. Okay, and then the symbol for the ohms is an omega. Okay, so these are the common terms that we are going to use in this particular video. But we have to add, add another uh, term here, so which is the power. The power or the electrical power. The electrical power here, the symbol for the, the unit of power is what? Okay, what is the unit of power? It's not a question, but still, what is the unit of power? Okay, so that's not the question. What is the unit of power? what <laughs> so just kidding <laughs> so power and then the what and then the symbol for what is w okay now so let's proceed to the uh the properties so as what i i've told you in the last lecture that if the voltage increases the current will also increase so that is a direct relationship however for the current and the resist resistance if the current in and if the resistance increases the current will decrease so in order for to eliminate the confusion, the best way is to express this relationship into what is commonly known as the Ohm's law. Okay, so the Ohm's law basically represents a mathematical representation that represents the relationship between among the uh, voltage, current, and resistance. The, those terms. So, what's the Ohm's law? The formula is very, very simple. So, the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So I is equal to V over R, or we have the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So if we're going to go back with the basic algebra here, we can uh, see that this numerator here, if we're going to remember that any number has a denominator of one, we can assume that there is a one in this I here. So it means to say that the I and this V here are both numerator. And then if we're going to express the relationship of both numerator, so we can say that the I and V have a direct relationship. Direct relationship in a way that if one variable increases, the other variable also will increase. And then if one variable, if this current here, here decreases, it means that the voltage will also decrease. So that is direct relationship. Now, if we are going to examine the relationship of now the, the current, okay, the current here, the I here, and then the resistance, we can see in this particular diagram here that the current is a numerator and then the R here is a denominator. So inverse. So it means to say that we can uh, say that the I and R have an inverse relationship. In which if I, if the current increases, okay, or if the resistance increases, the current will decrease. If the resistance decreases, the current will increase. So that's the basic, uh, th that's the basic idea here. Now, let's try to solve some simple problems. Although in the next succeeding lectures, we are going to solve all the problems, okay, take nota, all the problem solving that will come out in the written assessment, we are going to solve all of this. 
ahead of time. Okay? And then, during when you will be taking your written assessment, so it will be easier for you. It's much easier for you to solve all those problems. Take note that you are only given uh, 70 minutes to answer the 70 questions for your written assessment. Okay? So, yeah. So, let's proceed with uh, some simple problems here to solve some problems about the Ohm's law, the voltage, current, and resistance. Now, let's try to have some problem here. Let's say if we're going to draw this one, let's say the, the very common symbol here is this is a DC source. Okay, DC source in a way because there is a polarity, a positive and a negative sign. Okay, if this is an AC source, the AC source is just like this one here. Okay, so that symbol here, the wave symbol there is a sinusoidal symbol. It means that that, that is an alternating uh, current. Okay, so but in this particular case here, let, let's uh, let's solve some uh, let's solve some problem here. Okay, so just get your calculator. Okay, take note when you will be taking the exam, it will be better if you have a separate calculator for you to uh, have uh, to make it to make our lives easier. Okay, so let let me use the calculator inside this. I have some calculator here. Okay, so it would be better if you have a calculator at your side here. So now, let's try to solve some values here. Let's say that you have a voltage source, which is equal to, let's say, 9 volts. So you have a 9-volt battery here, and then this is connected to a load. So a load, which is, let's say, this one here is, uh, let's say, uh, 100 ohm. 100 ohm resistance or 100 ohm load. So the question in this particular case here is we have to solve for the current flowing in this uh, in the circuit here. So very simple. So using Ohm's law, we can say that the voltage or the current, okay, so the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Okay, so substitute the I is equal to the voltage here is 9 volts. Okay. And then the resistance is 100 ohms. So basically, get get our calculator. So you have a 9 divided by 100 equal to 0 0.09. So that is 0 0.09. Okay? So that is 0 0.09 ampere. Okay, so another thing that we have to discuss here is in this 0 0.09. Normally, guys, normally, we don't, express this one is a 0 0.09. If it is less than 1, we are going to express this one into milliampere. Okay? So we have to remember again the common terms. So ampere is equal to 1 ampere is equal to 1000 milliampere. Okay? So that's the conversion factor. Okay? So it means that if we are going to convert this one into a milliampere, okay, if we are going to convert this ampere into milliampere so we have to multiply this one to 1000 okay so multiply this one so 0 0.09 ampere multiplied by the conversion factor so take note that this conversion factor here we can express this conversion factor as a fraction form okay so 1 ampere divided by over 1000 milliampere so we can it would be easier to, for the conversion factor if you're going to express this one into a fraction form. And then later on, you are you are you just have to uh you just have to uh rotate this one or inverse this one, the numerator or the denominator, depending on the given. Okay, so in this particular case here, the given is ampere. So the denominator should be in ampere. So this conversion factor here will become the ampere should be on the denominator because we have ampere in the given and then we have 1000 milliampere so basically we just have to multiply the conversion factor so 
Again, you are going to get your calculator. You have 0 0.09 times 1,000 equals 90. So it means that this is the answer for this particular problem here is we have 90 milliampere. Okay, so there is also another way to convert this one. The the most since the most common problems here is the milliampere and the, and the kilo ohms later on. So one thing to convert this one to ampere milliampere is let's say a 0 0.09 ampere. Okay, so since this is a thousand decimal place, you just have to move through uh, three three decimal places. Okay, three decimal places to the right. Okay, to the right. Okay, and then if you're going to convert the milliampere to ampere, you just have to move to the left. Okay, so if you can remember this one by moving to the left, moving to the right, so it depends on what a method that you want to use. You can use the conversion factor or you can use this method here. So uh, you can have this one since milliampere to ampere, uh, ampere to milliampere, you have to move to the, to the right. Okay, so one, two, and then another again. Three. Okay, so since we have a hollow portion here, we have to fill this one by zero. Zero. And then the decimal point will be placed here. So that is equal to zero, zero, nine, zero milliampere now. Okay, or this is equivalent to 90 milli, milliampere. Okay, or for example, you're going to convert again, let's say a 50 milliampere. We're going to convert this one to ampere. So you just have to move the decimal place to the to the left. Okay? So we have change the color. So we have one, two, three. So this will be the new location of your decimal point. So since there's there is a hollow here, you just have to put a zero here. So therefore, the answer for this particular problem here, 50 milliampere is equal to a 0 0.050. Ampere. Okay, so I think it would be better for you, in my opinion, it would be better if you're going to use the conversion factor, this one here. One ampere divided by the one milliampere. Or you can, depending on the given, you can have 1,000 milliampere to one ampere. Okay, now, so let's try to solve another problem here. If the given is... Uh, if the given is the if the current and then the resistance, then now let's try to solve for the voltage. Okay, so given if this is the case here, there is some drawing here again, and then you have a load here, and then let's say that the uh, resistance for this particular case here, let's say uh, again for the simplicity purposes, let's say 100 ohms, and then let's say that the current flowing in this particular a line here, the current in this line here is, let's say, 2 amperes. So the question is, what is the voltage of this particular uh, circuit? So very simple. If you're going to uh, check the formula for the Ohm's law, the current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. Now, so if you're going to solve for the uh, voltage here, so you just have to cross multiply the volt, the current, and then the resistance. So that is equal to so the I R is equal to V. Or rearrange, rearranging this one, we have the voltage is equal to the current times the, the resistance. So substitute the value, the current is equal to 2 ampere. And then the resistance is equal to 100 ampere ohms. So it means this is 2 times 100. So this is 200 volts. In this particular case here, the answer is 200 volts. So now let's try to solve again if what if the resistance is the unknown? Okay, so let's solve another problem here. So let's say the voltage is equal to, let's say, uh, 20 volts. Okay, and then let's say the current flowing through that particular circuit is, let's say, uh, 5 amperes. Okay, so now let's try to solve for the resistance. So what is the value of the resistance? So Using the formula, I is equal to V over R. Okay, so since the unknown here is this R here, so you just have to cross multiply that one and then the I, you just have to put it downwards. So it means that the R now is equal to the voltage divided by the, the current. As simple as that. 
Okay? So, the voltage in this particular case here is 20 volts divided by the current is 5 amperes. So, this is uh, 20 divided by 5. So, that is 4. Or the, the unit of the resistance is ohms. So, the answer for this case here is 4 ohms. Okay. So, to remember again the formula, sir, what, what formula are we going to use? V I is equal to V over R. V is equal to I R. So, we can also use this uh, pi table here. Okay. Depending on what, what you want to, to use. Okay. So, in this particular case here, this is the V I R. So, as simple as that. So, if you're going to solve, if you're going to find the, the voltage, in this particular case here, just highlight this one, or you just can uh, put your finger in this particular V here, and then you can see that the formula is multiply the current and then the resistance. Okay? So, if you're going to find the current, the I, just put your hand, just put your hand in that particular I here, and then what you can see that the formula is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. And then at the same time, if you're going to solve for the R, just put your hands in or finger in this R here. Okay? And then you can see that the formula to solve for the R is equal to the voltage divided by the current. So as simple as that. Okay? So in the next lecture, we are going to solve for the uh, power. Okay? So see you on the next lecture.